And I've got some start bench cuts for you to do first before we get there. Mm, okay. Three different ones. Hopefully three different videos. Hopefully they do numbers. We're going to see. Mm. Real simple ones. You're going to see the, the theme is mad easy. So I need you to start bench cut these three icons. Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, and Tracy McGrady. Start bench cut. Start D Wade. Bench T Mac. Cut mellow. Cut mellow. Wow. I was was gonna, we're talking about basket, like playing basketball, or just like icons, or just like they're. Like, yeah, no, I, I, I just <laughs> trying to think of. I was trying to think of okay. a word that would like catch. Oh, okay. Watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was like, oh, are we going off their aura or like? We going nah, off? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. If we're talking basketball, give me D Wade. Give me T Mac and we're cutting Melo. Mm, I feel why like T Mac over Melo. I think T Mac, it like T Mac is like old Paul George, like his like skill set wise. You ever hear people talk about T Mac like NBA, NBA players? Kobe used to say T Mac gave gave them fits. Like T Mac's game was elite. That's actually a fantastic comparison because T Mac is like six eight six nine with dummy crazy handles. Bro, the way people talk about or older people talked about T Mac, that's the way people will talk about Paul George because, like, right. accolades wise, like, nah, like winning wise, anything like that, like, no. But, bro, you we, you hear all the time all these like high school kids or people getting to, just coming to the NBA, they be like, my goal is Paul George, like he's my greatest player ever. Because we talking about just skill set wise, like he's shoot, dribble, dunk, defense, like prime Paul George, like every literally everything. He's a 2K right. player. So, like, I just want to say he's a demigod, Bill, bro. <laughs> for real, though, he really is. Six, like, you six, eight, six, nine point four with lockdown badges, bro. <laughs> bro, if you, if you be like, yo, I want the perfect NBA player, like, forget about like Ackley and, and any of that, like, bro, just give me the perfect NBA player. You're going to make a tall player, like six, eight, mm-hmm. that can dribble. Paul George handles is like elite for his size, that can bang threes, that is athletic, that can play defense. That's Paul George, bro. It really is. Yeah. So, and I think T Mac is like old Paul George. Fair, fair enough. I look. I honestly would probably have. I probably would have the same three because T Mac, T Mac's offensive game. The handles were a step above what Carmelo could do, but Carmelo, you know, yeah. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. He did have threat. <laughs> the triple threat is vicious, bro. It was. Open it a, get open to the phone move. Facts. Next one I have for you here. I need you to start bench cut these three point guards: Steve Nash, Jason Kidd, and Chris Paul. Steve Nash, Jason Kidd, Chris Paul. Give me Chris Paul. I'm going to start Chris Paul. Mm. Mm. I mean, Steve Nash, though, was. I think I'm cutting. I'm cutting Jason Kidd. I think I'm cutting Jason Kidd in general. Okay. So it's really between do I want to start Chris Paul or do I want to start Steve Nash? It sounds crazy to not start the guy with two MVPs. We know one of them is like, anyway. It is. It is. <laughs> but I like Chris Paul. Like, it's weird because Chris Paul is like when I view Chris Paul, I view him as like the ultimate winner, but he has not won anything, which is kind of crazy, bro. <laughs> I, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. It's yeah, it's it's yeah. kind of crazy. Give me the point, God. I'm gonna start Chris Paul. I'm gonna bench Steve Nash, and I'm gonna cut Jason Kidd. I just that's me personally. Maybe a little biased too, because Chris Paul growing up was my favorite point guard. He still kind of is my favorite point guard ever. It's like, it's all opinionated. Yeah, it's you all know opinionated. I don't think you could really go wrong. Nah, nah. As Instagram, nah. As we're idiots. That's a terrible pick, bro. We could have put clears. This, what are you talking about? We could have put it in any order. They gonna say the same stuff, bro. <laughs> One of these days, you supposed three of the same, like three. These, three is the same. We switch it every single time. They go back. Jason Kidd clears. Chris Paul cleared. Steve Nash two MVPs. What are you talking about? <laughs> you're not gonna win. It's like a social win. media experiment. In fact, you're not gonna win, bro. It's just somebody's always going to be mad, no matter what you post. Young Jason Kidd on the New Jersey Nets was he was like that though. I 
that version of Jason Kidd, I he was different, bro. The passes that he was throwing away, he would really get guys open for lobs at the rim. One of the better rebounding guards, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and he could strap up on the defensive side of the ball, man. Jason Kidd was, was, was crazy. Later in his, you know, later in his career, he got the the jumper going. But early on, bro, that was that was Asin Kid. He had no J, yeah, no jumper. He, I, I was never really like a huge fan of Jason Kidd, to be honest. So like, I don't know why. I just you know, you have people you just gravitate to. You have people just like, yeah. Like I was yeah. never like a big Jason Kidd guy, anyways. Like I was, like I said, Chris Paul. Growing up, my favorite number was three. Like I, like because of Chris Paul, like uh, he was my favorite point guard. So you got to think, too, though, like Jason Kidd, by the time we're like really old enough to be watching live basketball, Jason Kidd is starting like he's in his decline. Chris yeah. Paul was going like we still was old enough to see Chris Paul and the Hornets then get to Lob I, City Chris Paul. Exactly. And I, Jason Kidd to me was never like I've watched older Jason Kidd. But I didn't, he was never a guy like there's some people who I've went back and like watched their game for real. Jason Kidd was never a guy that kind of like. Let me go really deep dive, Jason Kidd, on the it's net. Worth it. Like, it it's probably worth is. It. He was, I just never he done was it. Flashy. He was flashy. Um, handles was tight, and he was just he was a playmaker for real. It's mm-hmm. also very funny to see. I've seen at least two or three people find out like live reaction that Jason Kidd is black. A lot of people just think he's white. <laughs> it's that? like, bro, yeah. If y'all go Google Jason Kidd on the Phoenix Suns, bro, I had a little a little high top. Oh, dear. Or before he before he rocked the Scabaldi. People don't like people be thinking it's just all mixed people is just white. <laughs> hey, I just all white. <laughs> Bro, he lost the hair in it. It was a lot over. Of people was confused. He's over. Got one more for you here. Honestly, it's probably the hardest one. Oh boy. I need you to start bench cut these power fours. Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett. Dirk Nowitzki. It's this. It's the trio. It's the big trio. <laughs> so you said power four. That's I'm like. It's gonna be Tim, KG, Dirk. I already go. knew. Now right. give me the rankings. Tim Duncan, KG, Dirk Nowitzki. That's and that's is. why you're wrong. No, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even say that was my order. I'm literally just making sure that was the three. Oh yeah, that was the three. So Tim, I mean Tim Duncan has to be one because Tim Duncan is the greatest power forward ever. Fair. So Tim has to be one. So it's really between KG and Dirk Nowitzki. Personally, I'm not gonna lie to like Dirk. Dirk's playoff run was elite. He had, dunks. in my opinion, still the best ever. Then I would listen. There's n- you really honestly though. That's really like a huge case to be the best like playoff run ever from like a, a like a superstar. The the Sweet. degree of gu- difficulty of who they beat, like what. The swept Kobe and the Lakers that, after they're coming off of a ring in the second round, then beat KD and Russell Westbrook and Harden to get to the finals against the newly formed Heatles and beat them in six while he had the flu. I see. Yeah, you see the jersey in the back, man. That's the, you're the biggest. I'm dirt always going. I'm always going to ride for my boy, man. <laughs> 11-year-old me, I never, ever, ever forget watching the end of game six and being like, he did it. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro, you really – I don't think I know another Dirk fan in my life, bro. I don't know anyone who's as it's big de- as Dirk definitely Dirk. not up there, bro. It's not many of them. I met many more in Texas up there, bro. You're not Nobody care about Dirk like that. That's an obscure player on the <laughs> Mavericks, bro. <laughs> But that yeah. bro in Dallas, bro, beloved, bro. Dirt probably will never have to pay for anything ever anywhere shouldn't. in the whole city. It shouldn't. Shouldn't have yeah. to. But uh, but yeah, so we talking about Tim Duncan's one. Mm-hmm. After all that, I think I might I might I kind of want to slide Dirk just because like I his run was impressive, but I like defense. I've always been a defensive guy. So I think I'm so I'm think I'm gonna be... do KG two and then Dirk okay. three. So I'm gonna uh, start Tim Duncan, bench KG, cut Dirk. But it's very close between the last two though, because Dirk's run was super impressive. I'll never knock anybody for putting Kevin Kevin Garnett over Dirk. Anything after that, 
Uh, if we're just talking those three, um, like Giannis. I've seen people start right, yeah. I'm yeah. <laughs> people people start to float Giannis and uh, we can have the, those discussions, but it's like we can't we can't disrespect Dirk a little that that much. Mm-hmm.